Hello filmmakers, this is Kerry, and I broke my drone. All right, yep, this is my Mavic 3. And today, I was seriously pushing it today with testing the obstacle avoidance. And apparently, I pushed it past its limits. So let's get into it and I'm gonna show you what happened, what I was doing, and I, before we get going, the crash was my fault, okay? <laughs> By, yes, the, it did hit something and it's supposed to have amazing obstacle avoidance, but there's limitations and I wanna go over them with you. So let's get looking at some footage. Okay, <laughs> if you, have followed Filmmaker Central for a while, you know I have another YouTube channel called Trail Traveler. And Trail Traveler is all about off-roading, off-road education. Uh, hopefully it's entertaining and it's, uh, it's fun. I do product reviews of off-roading products. We do trail guides. We do all kinds of cool stuff like that. And we do that almost every weekend. We're out somewhere. And in the past, I had the Mavic 2 Pro and the Autel Evo 2 Pro. And I would have to switch between them based on what I was doing. If I wanted to use the active track features, I wanted it to follow me, I would use the DJI Mavic 2 Pro because it did that extremely well. Not flawlessly, but it did it pretty well. The problem was when it was doing the active track, the side obstacle avoidance sensors didn't work and it would have a tendency to go sideways into trees. And it did it a number of times. Now, some of that, it, it was just unavoidable because I'm driving and I'm trying to control the aircraft because I'm by myself or, or whatever. And it just was difficult to do both things. Now, on the other hand, the Autel Evo 2 Pro had really good obstacle avoidance, but what they call dynamic track, it's not very good. So the amount of usable shots just wasn't, wasn't as high, but it was far less likely to hit something. Still did a couple of times, which again, these things are not flawless, right? If you're looking at a branch that's the size of your arm, it's gonna miss it. It's gonna stop, it's going to avoid it. If you're looking at a twig that's smaller than your pinky, it's not gonna miss it. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's not gonna see it at all. It's just gonna go right into it. So you have to understand the limitations of the systems. And from what I've seen of the Mavic 3, it's supposed to be better than anything else out there. And I've slowly been getting more confident in putting it into tight situations. I've seen more videos, I've seen what other people are doing, and I've been very impressed with it. So today was the day. And I'm gonna show you some stuff here. So now these are the, this is kind of the type of shot that I would set up quite often, and I have to drop down into the tree line to get set up to do a shot like this. So it's more designed to be like a tripod shot that the vehicles go driving by. Now this is very easy. I just drop down into an open area, let the vehicles drive by, and then continue on. And for stuff like this, any drone is fine. I mean, it literally could be a mini. It doesn't matter. You could use pretty much any drone. And of course, I'm using the Mavic 3 because of the four-third sensor camera on it. The additional low light that capabilities that I get from being in these trails where all these shadows are, it's, it's very, very useful. So, uh, and you can see in some of these shots, it was very, very windy today. We had some pretty high winds. So in a lot of situations, I'm using a drone like a portable tripod. I'm flying it up ahead, I'm getting in position, we drive by. Um, 
fairly common uh, situation for us. However, I wanted to kind of test it today and see how good is the obstacle avoidance going to be. And so let's try it. Let's try following behind the Jeeps and see what it's doing. Now I'm, I'm going pretty quick here and it's, it's weaving around pretty good. I'm not controlling it at this point. I'm simply telling it go straight and I'm only pushing forward on the right stick and it's doing everything else until we get to a turn. And now I'm, I'm telling it to go ahead and yaw to the right to stay behind the vehicles, but I'm giving it very, very little in terms of input for it to do what it's going to do. And the result, fantastic. It did an excellent job of avoiding things. So very, very happy with the performance. Uh, be very difficult for me to be m more happy. It was really, really good. And let me go down here. And uh, I think this is the one. So in this shot, I'm literally just pushing the right stick down. I'm pulling it down so it's flying in reverse. I'm giving it almost no input at all other than yawing to go around turns and it's doing all this flying. It's avoiding the trees, it's avoiding branches, it's going up, down, it's a, a, taking into account changes in elevation as we climb up or go down on these trails. It's doing a phenomenal job. So what happened, all right? Well, what I can tell you what happened is this is the last footage that it shot or that was recorded. Now, it's kind of hard to tell from here, but there is almost no room around the Jeep on either side or above it. It's just twigs. And I kept forcing it. I wanted it to get in front of the Jeep. And I put it into a bad situation and it needed to do something and it clipped the tiniest of, of tree branches. I mean, super, super tiny. I saw it on the screen and I was like, oops. And then it was too late. I thought it was going to recover, but it fell to the ground. So let's, let's take a look at the damage, All right? So camera, good shape. It hit and basically fell straight down. Now, this is as I recovered it. Okay, this one, good. Propellers destroyed. Uh, it's got a big crack in the propeller. That one's gotta go. This side, okay, these propellers all chewed up. Those have to go. Uh, okay, back here, this motor, Okay, well, I just got debris out of the motor and now the motor spins, sort of. <laughs> um, I would say this motor needs to be replaced. Um, it's, it's not in good shape at all. And it's missing. No, I guess it's not. Let's, I'm gonna compare it to the other side. So it does look exactly like the other side in terms of the top but there's something in there. I can feel it catch once in a while. So there's some debris in this motor. It needs to be replaced. The bottom of this is cracked and the LED is loose on here. That could be just an, an easy, you know, glue fix because it, it's not a structural part, but um, since the motor needs to be replaced anyway, it's basically gonna be a, an arm replacement. Okay, on this side, I mean, this motor is seized. There, there's probably a rock in there, something. Actually, I see it. It's part of the propeller. So maybe if I get that out, then this side would be okay, and only this one piece would be broken. Now, if that's the case, well, see, I'm still kind of sketched 
about this motor because it does seem to, to bind up once in a while. Um, but maybe if I can clear debris out of here and I can get the broken pieces of plastic out of here, tack that up with a, a little super glue there, we may be in good shape. Um, it might not have to go in for repair, at least not yet. Um, but the motor, this motor does concern me and this motor is frozen up, so we'll see. Now these motors are cheap, they're, they're not super expensive. This total repair, I would imagine, would cost me under $100 to be fixed. So I'm not very upset about it. Like I said, it was not in any way the fault of the drone. It is entirely my fault in putting it into a situation where it couldn't see these tiny, tiny twigs. It is December. It is middle of December or beginning of December here. And a lot of these trees, there's no leaves on them. They are just bare branches. And when there's tiny little things, we call these uh, ghost branches. And they can, they can bite you. And they've done it on pretty much every drone I've owned has hit some ghost branch at some point because they're just too small for the sensors to see. Now, all that being said, the obstacle avoidance on here was phenomenal. That is the best I've ever seen. It maneuvered through those trees forwards and backwards without any hiccup. It avoided stuff that I thought for sure it was gonna hit. And I mean, there's some, some thin branches that it just stopped. And uh, there was a couple situations where the aircraft stopped, it just, stopped instead of trying to go around and bypass and, and find a new route it simply stopped because it couldn't find a route that was safe and so that's when i have to take control maybe back it up take it up you know look at the situation why is it not moving why does it think it can't move and i need to get it out of that situation and that's pretty much what happened when it crashed is it was in this situation where it didn't want to move and I'm manually moving things around. Okay, how could I have avoided the crash? And that's very, very simple. Move the Jeep. Had I moved the Jeep forward so that there was then room in front of it, you know, so it could go past that spot and then come up and go over the Jeep, or had I gone backwards so that it could come down in front of the Jeep and go forwards, none of this would have happened. So. I cannot blame DJI for this. This was me seriously pushing the obstacle avoidance to its absolute limits, and I saw where it failed. And it failed because of what I did. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, there's all these Mavic 3 crashes. No, you know what? It's very often someone doing something like this. They're in sport mode and all the sensors turn off, or they've disabled the sensors, or they're putting it into basically what is an impossible situation, and there's just no hope for it. So hopefully this uh, is gonna be an interesting test to see how fast this gets turned around. Well, I, in fact, I don't even know that I'm sending it in yet. I need to get in here with some air and some tweezers and make sure there's no debris before I decide if I'm going to send it in for repair. I might, I mean, this motor is really, really good. This one just doesn't, I don't know, it, it doesn't sound right. So I'm a little concerned, uh, even if I get this one dialed back in, I'm a little concerned that this one is sounding kind of, uh, kind of chunky in there. And if that's the case, and all I have to do is have this arm replaced with the, the broken piece underneath and this motor, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly looking at a repair of less than $100. And I'm good with that for something that I know was my fault. So hopefully this helped kind of give you some information about this particular incident and how good the obstacle avoidance on the Mavic 3 is. Because I'll tell you, I'm blown away by it. So thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. I'll catch you next time.
Bye-bye.